Welcome to Energizing Conversations. I have my colleague partner Nikhil Moghe with me today. Nikhil, how are you? I am doing good, Anish. Very well. Well, fantastic. And I'm going to talk to you today about biofuels, which is doing some amazing rounds in every conversation. It's a uh, toast of the season, so to speak. My first question, given that you've spent about your good part of the last three to four years in this theme, is that how did this explosion happen? So, Anish, this all started in um, 2018 after the uh, National Bio Policy, uh, no, Biofuel Policy came in. And, uh, you know, earlier the biofuel policy did not talk too much about all kinds of biofuels. Okay, It was just a peripheral touch that the policy had. But in 2018, the new policy that came in segregated the biofuels into various kinds of biofuels. And then there were a lot of interventions that were uh, promised and proposed. And uh, after that, you know, the private sector and the public sector saw this as an opportunity for us to, you know, invest into and that's how it all started. Is it, is it global or is it more India? So this is this is the India story, but globally also this is gaining prominence because uh, with all the net zero emissions uh, and, you know, the targets that the countries are setting up, you know, this is something that people are thinking of uh, investing because uh, it's, it's something that is distributed, it is something that is available everywhere. You don't have to depend on any particular industry or any particular uh, country for that matter, right? And that's how it all picked up globally as well. Okay, so you say that it's always been there, it's been available all the time, everywhere. But why now? Uh, it's, it's because, you know, uh, the narratives have changed, like, you know, you've seen hydrogen coming up suddenly, right? So it's about how, you know, people see these clean fuels coming up and shaping the overall energy industry and biofuel is one of them. So that's how it, it started picking up. In fact, if I if I look at it, it's not just about biofuels alone. It's a biogenic processes, you know, which have caught on on a very Absolutely. big way. You know, you're using refinery fluids to through biogenic process just to create ethanol and sustainable Absolutely. aviation fuel. You're using compressed biogas, and you know, it is it is something which has been used in much more varied formats. You know, Absolutely. it's not one product which is coming out of correct. And fuels is one product. You know, your biochar, biofertilizers. All of that is the technology developing quickly yes of course and you know that is uh, you know i've seen that changing in past two years itself you know the uh, sustainable aviation fuel itself you know it was like a you know it, it was kind of a rocket science you know three four years back but then now if you see there are many companies coming up globally and in india which are looking at uh, producing uh, saf from ethanol and there are many other uh, tie-ups that, that that are happening. You know, you are aware of some of the tie-ups that our clients have done, right? So mm -hmm. that's how things are changing, and people are investing into R and D. There's a lot of uh, innovation happening, and this innovation is happening on uh, by the startups. So that is something that is quite exciting. So, so are the startups, you know, getting the support from the mainstream industry, or are they on their own, and the mainstream industry is on its own? So. The story is different in different countries, Anish. So, um, if, you, if, if I talk about UK, there's a lot of support that's happening and some of the Indian companies are doing good in UK for that matter. Uh, India, yes, it has started. Um, it is still time to, you know, uh, you know go, go a long way because there are investments that are happening, but not to the scale of what is required at this moment. So what's the time frame? You know, by 2030, 2030 is a milestone year, for, yeah. especially in the climate battle. Do you see a major scale up by 2030? Yes, I see that because uh, while, like I said, the innovation is happening somewhere else, uh, the market is in India. So the companies are looking at India as as, 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 as usual, you know, in all, all commodities as one of the biggest market. Mm. So innovation might happen somewhere else, but uh, India is where the demand is. And but innovation, India is the innovation hub now, is it not? happening in India at all? Yeah, no, no. So I'm not saying that it's not happening, but it's not happening to the scale it should have happened. Okay. Right? And that can change? That can change drastically if, if government comes in and have something like what they did for National Hydrogen Mission. Right? Okay. So enough of investments. If it comes, then definitely, why not? But the Global Biofuels Alliance, is it setting the tone in some sense? Yes, to an extent, yes. Uh, the only challenge is that the Global Biofuel Alliance at this moment is uh, you know, concentrating on three, four major countries. Right? Okay. And the innovation is happening 
uh, in the countries which are unfortunately not a part of this alliance at the moment okay okay that's interesting because you know biofuels is so dispersed it's always been used yeah uh, now let's let's switch to a little bit to you know what are the enablers which are required you know one of the things which i have struggled with in biofuels mm. uh, conceptually is the supply chain issues if that is solved uh, that could be a big enabler technology the core technologies yeah. if there is the improvement in the biology or the chemistry yeah. of it yeah. it could be a, a big enabler digital could be a big enabler because these are all dispersed distributed across and if we are have the digital means to create platforms yeah. platformization of this happens yeah. then that could be an enabler yes. human resources could be a big enabler are those which are the biggest enablers in your assessment and are those falling in place yeah so uh, see supply chain like you rightly said that's 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 one of the say challenges but when we solve that that could be one of the biggest enabler for sure um but at the moment the way we are handling supply chain it is mostly on one to one or plant to plant basis right so we have to have a platform which is set we have to have uh, you know uh, iot um based uh, platforms where uh, you know we can use those platforms to mark the fields mark the billers mark the operators and uh, structure a framework where all these things can come into one one cohesive platform right um we as kpmg we have developed one such platform um which could be utilized and uh, the ministry is pretty keen on using those kind of platforms so supply chain for sure uh second i would see anish uh, you know ai coupled with iot again would be a game changer and why i say so is because uh, the digestion for every raw material for every location is different mm. in north it is different in south it is different in coastal areas it is different so the learning of how the microbes digest a particular raw material will help us in understanding what's the kind of yield mm. what is it that needs to be done to improve that yield right so there's a huge set of work that can, uh, that that, uh, that can be done in uh, with ai generative ai coming into this space so biofuels 2.0 seems to be very absolutely. different from 1.0 absolutely 1.0 is, is is a you know if i have to put in layman's language it's maruti car the other one is audi right so you have okay. to look at that way Okay. Okay. Fantastic. So, so after 16 years in consulting, Nikhil, you are stepping out and going into that industry. You know, how does it feel? So it feels good. Uh, so two different kind of uh, uh, areas and uh, platforms, I would say. Uh, while consulting is, you know, quite exciting. We do a lot of stuff across various areas. We work very closely with the policymakers and others. the government uh, industry is uh, mostly on making it happen right so ground level activities looking at how things can work on ground and uh, and then looking at risks so now various kind of uh, companies have various kind of risk profiles right a private equity guy might have a different risk profile than a large scale biofuel developer in the country promoter driven organizations right so or the public sector or the public sector for that matter so things are changing quite a lot and i've seen a lot of um, new age startups coming up in this space so tying up with those startups for us as as industry as in, I'm, i'm i'm still not out but then you know once we start these activities it will be very good to have you know a, a kind of ecosystem where we have the startups where we have the consultants coming in where we have the Uh, technology, technology providers coming in and you know making this happen so and the big so, guys as well coming in absolutely together. so the, so the crux is make it happen so, so that is so if i had to say in this conversation with one question about what is the most exciting thing about what you're looking forward to in, in the future so the one thing okay so i i i would look at you know india being the largest biofuel producer in the country in the world right that is something that i'm looking at because i'm sure we can do it and and inscribing your name in that journey absolutely i would okay. want to do that nikhil thank you for this thank all the best much. you know we have traveled long distances yeah, together uh, yeah, and absolutely. i'm just fascinated by the journey you're going to make thank, thank you, you. thank you so much thank you.